welcome to Lane Hardcore University. This is Connor at Lane here. Um, I want to answer a question, take some time to answer a question from an awesome YouTube viewer that left a subscriber. Uh, his name's Hussein Castillo. Thank you for so much for the wonderful question. Um, just paraphrasing what he stated, he was basically asking, uh, how long do I give a hardcore renter once they're late? If they have not paid, how many days or how much time do I give them? Um, how do I message them? How do I go about it? What's my process, my, my procedure basically? And when do I repossess the vehicle? So very good question. So I think it's very valuable. So I'm gonna teach, uh, teach you guys my strategies and share it with Hussein Castillo and my YouTube family. So this is what I do uh, essentially. I'm a hire car owner. I've been on for over two years now and I have been through this a, a few times but I've had a lot more wins, a lot more successes than this happened. This is actually a, is a rarity but it has happened to me. There was even a time where my car was gone for over 14 days, over two weeks, not making no money and she did not return my car back. It was, it was crazy. And it could be anyone, it could be a male, female, doesn't matter what they look like, who they are. This can happen because sometimes people just don't don't know how to play nice. But if this happens to you and someone doesn't return your vehicle or they're late, for example, this is the first step you must take is plan, plan, plan. Always pre-plan, plan for the worst. You can't get rid of risk 100% of the time in my personal opinion and from what's been proven, but you can definitely lessen the negative effects of uh, some type of uh, situation where you have some type of risk, uh, whatever you want to lessen the amount of risks that can happen to you. So you can't get rid of it necessarily, but you definitely take good procedures and practices and put good systems in place so that you can actually mitigate the risks as low as possible. I'm an insurance mitigation specialist. I have my own firm and I help people to teach them how to actually lessen the uh, significance of risk um, with, with their businesses. But so that's a whole different business I'm into, but I'm gonna teach you guys for free. That Those are my business clients. You guys are my YouTube family, so I'm gonna give, this, give these tips to you for free. So this is one of the tips I'll highly recommend for your higher curve business is this, y'all. Look, since, since always plan, plan, plan. First thing, consider getting some trackers, first step. You don't have to get trackers. I highly recommend getting them installed in the vehicle. The reason why installation is key, because they can't be removed. The ones that are connected to the OBD2 uh, ports, those can be pulled out and you're done. The ones that are installed, they can't just simply pull those up because they're installed inside the car and they're hardwired. I highly recommend those. I use those are the ones I implement. I actually use a company called TrackMate GPS. There's a lot of other great companies too. You don't have to use them, but they are a company that have proven successful so far. TrackMate uh, GPS. But again, you can actually find anyone to see. I would highly recommend just getting some type of tracker. Even if you don't get it installed, uh, get it put into your car. That way, you can track your car, and especially if it has a kill switch feature, try to get a tracker that has a kill switch feature. If it doesn't have a track a, a kill switch feature, that's fine. At least you could track and give that to authorities, and you know where your car is at all times. But that's the first step. Get get some type of tracker, kill switch is uh, preferably, and also hard installed, where it's installed inside the car preferably. But if you can't do that, at least get some type of tracker. If you don't have tracker set, if you don't have any type of tracker, or you do have a tracker, but especially if you don't have a tracker, the next step you want to do, even if you have a tracker or don't have a tracker, is simply this: go to your local police station and simply ask them what are what's the steps to actually file for a stolen vehicle. You want to know this is very important. This happened to me, and I was caught like not knowing what to do. But after that, I learned. It took me one time to learn, and I never made the mistake again. My car was stolen, and it was gone for about nine days. And I was really trying to be nice with the lady. She was communicating me, saying, oh, sorry, so come, and she stopped communication and ended up being nine days, which is ridiculous. I'll never really get that far again. But at that point, I didn't have a tracker. First mistake. Second, I didn't know how to go about it in my my city uh, of uh, Los Angeles, but also Los Angeles County. Los Angeles is also a county, and different cities and municipalities and locales have different rules. Sometimes you'd be surprised. You always want to speak with the police station in your local uh, local territory, because what they'll do is they'll tell you, okay, look, like for example, in my area, unfortunately, uh, in the area I was in at that time, uh, the specific city I was in was, if it was your own personal vehicle, you could you could actually file for a theft. Uh, theft and recovery of a vehicle after three days. It had to be after 72 hours. But if the, if, if it was for rent, like say commercial, you had to wait 14 days, y'all. 14 days. That was that was crazy. It was ludicrous. I, 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 even even 72 hours in my opinion was too long. That's like your car gets stolen now. You can't report. They won't even take your police report in my county until 72. I get it. That's the rules. It is what it is. But at least know it so that because at least you're not caught surprised. If you're surprised, now you're reactive. You always want to be proactive so you know what to do. You know, okay, you know what? Okay, this is the set amount of time. So now I know what to do and where to go and how to handle this. You always want to do that. Make sure you're always at the point where you actually know what your police station says and what the rules are in your territory. That way you know how to actually 
take care of the situation right away. You know if you have to wait three days, you know if you wait 14 days, you know if you might have to wait 16 days or one day, you know. Never, never, ever get to the point where you don't know the rules that the police station goes by. Because you, it might happen to you, your car might be stolen after one or two days, you go to the police station, you can't even follow a report. Now, now you don't know what to do. So always have a pre-plan, understand, so that you already have all your ducks lined in a row. And you know, as soon as, so as soon as you go to the police station, you're not wasting your time, and you know the exact amount you're supposed to get down there. Next step, what the message I typically send to a guest is upon if, if they don't if they don't renew the car, like I said, renew the the reservation. What I'll do is I'll send a message say, hey, I see that you didn't uh, renew the reservation. Just want to let you know uh, it's due right now. I'm happy to extend it to you. If you don't want to extend it, let me know when you want to meet up. S simple that, bam, that's it. You can put in your own verbatim, but that's basically it. Just let them know, hey, I know you're late. Uh, you can definitely extend. I'm happy to extend this to you with your due payment. And if you don't want to do, uh, if you don't want to pay, please return the car, and I'll be more than happy to meet you. Let me know what your ETA is and when you can return the car. Bam. If they respond and say, oh, I'm sorry, and oftentimes they say, oh, my bad, I forgot, or hey, I just have to make money, or they might, they might say, oh, sorry, I forgot, I changed my account. They pay it, you're done. Next one that's pretty common that's happened to me quite a bit, which is a, a good reason. They say, oh, you know, I just didn't make enough money this month or I didn't make enough money. I, I'm waiting for my last, my next check to come out or my next next direct deposit coming tomorrow. If they let me know and, and they give me a time frame, what I do say they say one day, I'll be like, I'll mark that one day. If they say two days, at that point, I'll contact uh, higher car. If they say one two days and I'll ask them and say, hey, look, I'm gonna let them go. But I'm letting you know they owe me uh, for one day. They set that Lyft or Uber or their, just remember, we're renting to people to, to work or Amazon Plus is going to pay them direct deposit money in their account. I'm expecting them to pay. And, uh, but if, after this part, I'm going to uh, get the car back. I let higher car know and I let, uh, let the uh, renter know that you must bring the car back. Um, if you uh, So I'll give them max usually one or two days. If they say, oh, I'm getting paid by in one week or in three days, no, my max amount is 40 hours actually. I usually don't offer that though. I always offer max 24 hours, but if they say and, they, and they've been a good renter and I know them or I've gotten to know them, I'll give them that extra day. Say, fine, you got two days. I always give them 24 hours. If they say, I need two days, I'll give them two days. If they say they need three days, you gotta bring my car back and what you can do. And what I say at that point, uh, sir, amount, um, bring my car back and once you get the money you can rent my car again if you like sometimes they don't like that um, and that could be a problem it, it, they might be mad or angry but at the point at this point you don't want your car destroyed you don't want it to not be covered you don't they need to bring your car back and figure that out and oftentimes I've had situations where they, they find a way to get the money maybe they have the money but they just don't want to pay you that money so it is what it is, and they'll find that money. They'll pay me. Uh, they'll, they'll, they'll they'll renew it because they don't want to bring the car back because that's more that's more issues, more trouble. So that's usually what I do. I just let them know, hey, your 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 rentals due uh, due for payment. Please pay. And if you don't want to pay, you can re return a car back today, today. And they say, oh, I'm sorry, I can't bring it back today. Um, I'll be paid tomorrow. I'll give them max 24 hours. And, uh, that, and if they need another day, I'll give them max two, uh, 48 hours, max. Top, top, top max is 20, 40 hours. Anything over that, I need my car back immediately. Then at that point, however, uh, I start the repossession process. If they didn't pay me or they, they still have the car after one or two days, I start the repossession process where I send them a message saying, hey, please bring it back. I inform higher car, please bring it back. That's the first step. And then once it hits three days and four days, that at that point, whatever the rules are in your city or state, that then I'll immediately report to the police department. At that point, I'm just taking screenshots of the messaging that I sent them through text messaging, through email, through um, that commun my communications with Hire Car, document that I notify Hire Car. I document me notifying Hire Car. I document that I spoke with the Hire Car renter through the Hire Car messaging app and through their. Uh, text messaging so that there's no denial that I really notified them and also I can't deny that I contacted them too as well so I always get all that documentation and by the time I'm able to actually follow a police report with the police station I do that and then if I have a tracker I cut the car off and then I start and I'll go get the car myself that's why it's always important to have two three keys remember pre-plan plan 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 that's why you want to have at least two to three keys I'll say have three keys at all times so if one key's lost you give it you have two keys left if one like that's what it always have a spare key so that way like you let the person park the car you cut the car off if you have a tracker in it and you go pick up the car you take your car back if they come outside see the car is not there they might be mad but they didn't pay anyway that's how you get your car back yourself without having to incur any type of toll fees or anything like that but i'll always report that to hire car so that hire car could get their team on it but if you get your car yourself and it's close enough for you to get it I'll go get it myself. That's the next step I would take. Cut the car off. But for that, you need a tracker, uh, however. And if, if, you, if you don't have a kill switch where you can cut the car off, 
Okay, when they finally park the car, say they're sleeping, you go that time, you watch, you monitor, get the car, get to that location and tow it back. Or notify hikers so they can send their tow truck to go get it to some of the exact coordinates. That's how I handle it, people. Um, hopefully I gave you all what, what you needed, uh, Hussein Castillo. And for anyone else that wants to know how to actually handle a bad situation where the renter doesn't want to return your car or doesn't pay you for your car, that does happen. That has happened to me. I have much more success stories, but that, that has happened to me. I want to be completely honest. I don't want to share just the good side without the bad side. I have had some bad situations, some really bad situations, but that's how I handle it. That's how the more you actually plan, 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 the less uh, you'll, uh, uh, you'll lessen the effects of the risk, and that's how you mitigate risk. So I love you guys. Like, subscribe, share. Uh, leave any comments or questions below in the comment section. Also, follow me on Instagram at Conrad Lane. And I love you guys. Let's, have, let's make this money. Let's get to it. Let's be successful. Proud of you guys. Currently now. Peace.